A los policías idiotas se les encomienda hacer cumplir la ley. Pero, ¿qué ocurre cuando detienen por error a abogados? Aquí hay cinco veces cuando policías idiotas arrestan abogados. Esta es Catherine Henry, abogada constitucionalista. El 3 de noviembre de 2020, el día de las elecciones presidenciales generales, Catherine se encontraba en un aparcamiento en el condado de Allegan, Michigan, acompañada de otras personas. Supuestamente situada cerca de un colegio electoral, se dedicaba a presentar literatura de campaña para las elecciones. Los oficiales de la oficina del sheriff del condado de Allegan llegaron al lugar. Alegaron que ningún individuo podía aparcar ni instalar ninguna estructura en una propiedad del municipio destinada al uso público, especialmente el día de las elecciones, sin permiso previo del secretario del municipio o de un funcionario. Sin embargo, la ley también estipula que un individuo puede difundir información relacionada con las elecciones a más de 100 pies de la zona de votación. So he's here trying to arrest me. This is our setup. Uh, so we are nowhere near the 100 foot mark, which is um, the drain in the road uh, right between where that silver truck and that car are pulling out. That's the 100 foot mark where you can't, you can't be past it in the other direction because those doors right there are the uh, doors to get into the precinct. And the law clearly says we, d we can't be within 100 feet. Uh, we also can't be impeding anybody from getting in. So they are, uh, he said, going to arrest me if we don't leave right now because uh, the township owns this property and the township said that we have to leave. Funny thing is the township has a resolution that specifically says we have the right to be here. Um, and he doesn't want to read the resolution again. He doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to read the law um, or the constitutional provisions that allow us to be here. Oh, the 100 feet is way over there. Um, uh, I don't know the address right off the top of my head. Okay, head. so you're aware, I know you, you two have already like met, so this is Mary Lou, she, uh, this is, she's a township, township supervisor. Late I know. Okay? Uh, so she already spoke with you. I know, earlier today, okay. and then I went back so and we kind of came up she with She has it. something to say, okay? okay. Um, I explained to you that we have this resolution that not allow... No, it says you do. It says you do. I, I, I'm just asking you guys to read it. Nothing in this resolution shall be construed to interfere with MCL 168.931K, which allows, guys, it allows a person to disseminate campaign literature on election day when a person is beyond 100 feet not, from an entrance. We're not contesting MCL 168. No, it's saying we have a right. It says this resolution says we have a right to be here. We're allowed to be here as long as we're beyond the 100 feet. That's what it says. That part has nothing to do with this part. What are you, what part? You may not leave a vehicle on township property beyond the time necessary to transact township business. But it says right here that nothing in this that is meant to. But that does not say anything about okay. leaving a vehicle on township property beyond township business hours. So you were asked to leave. Okay, do you understand that? So you were asked to leave. Are you willing to leave? Yes or no? So all of you, um, let's see, this is Deputy Bustle. Am I Bustle saying that correct? And Anderson. Yep. Deputy Langloy. Anderson. Anderson. Yep. Deputy Bustle, Deputy Anderson, and Deputy, Deputy Langloy are telling me that they're going to arrest me. 
Okay. Hold on a second. Henry mantuvo que se encontraba dentro de la distancia permitida y que estaba presente allí legalmente. Sin embargo, parecía que los ayudantes del sheriff tenían otras intenciones. I know you just came, okay. and I'm, I am, okay. I'm trying to be calm, but okay. as you can tell, I'm a little, okay. just give me, just, sir, I'm just, okay. let me finish the sentence. Can I, can I ask you, five minutes, can I ask you for five minutes to talk about what the law actually says? You've already talked to the supervisor, they've asked you She has no right to stop me from being here. Are you willing to leave, yes or no? You have no right to, you're we violating a, the law. Okay, we have a right to ask you. Can you, no, you don't. The prosecutor on, is on board with the trespassing. I don't care what the prosecutor says, you can't Are trespass. Are you willing to leave? I'm asking if you're willing to look at the law. Are you willing to leave? Possibly if you look at the law. Okay, this has nothing to do with what she's requesting you. Yeah, but the, she can't override the law. Are you willing to leave? This is Mary Lou, I can't read her last name, clerk of Layton Township. So also someone who's violating our rights. Alegando insistentemente las disposiciones legales que permiten su participación en la campaña, Catherine Henry argumenta constantemente su derecho a estar presente, a pesar de las advertencias de la secretaria del municipio, Mary Will, y de la policía, que instan a Henry a abandonar la zona, los agentes optan finalmente por actuar. This is absolutely unnecessary. Tras unos instantes de gritar, Catherine Henry fue finalmente liberada por la policía. Más tarde explicó que su motivación para abordar la situación con prontitud estaba alimentada por la preocupación por su hija, que estaba en el coche, y no quería que se asustara por el altercado con la policía. You're live on Facebook. Um, you have your keys to your car. Okay, because I gave them and then they took them for her. So I'm glad you got them back. That's all I want to make sure. She's in the car. Um, where is there like a... I got a... What do you need to know? I'm right And then he asked me what kind of law I practice. Of course, I said, I'm a constitutional attorney. And he asked me where. And I said, the address, you know, in Hudsonville. He said, oh, you work out of your home. I said, yep. Uh, and asked me something else. And I said, yep, I'm one of the attorneys that did argue against the unconstitutionality of the governor's executive orders. And then that's when he said it wasn't personal. Right. <laughs> Maybe if I hadn't have been physically assaulted uh, with such ridiculous force, three grown men not allowing me to sim simply, I said, I don't want my phone to break. 
That's probably on the video because my phone hadn't broken. So that's probably on the video that I was doing. Um, I said, I just want to put my phone on the table right there. Set it down so it doesn't break. Nope. Si cree que la policía cometió un gran error al detener a este abogado, espere a ver el siguiente caso. Esta es Rebeca Musarra, una abogada. El 16 de octubre de 2015, sufrió una parada de tráfico iniciada por oficiales del Departamento de Policía del Condado de Warren, en Nueva Jersey. Cuando fue interrogada por la policía, Musarra optó por ejercer su derecho legal a permanecer en silencio, ya que un ciudadano no está obligado a responder a las preguntas de las fuerzas del orden. Did I talk? Okay, I'm gonna ask you one more time. You know why you're being stopped tonight? A pesar de su postura legal como ciudadana, la oficial se enfureció al ser ignorada. En consecuencia, procedió a tomar medidas que más tarde se revelarían como una violación de la ley. Vea el desarrollo de los acontecimientos. Los agentes afirmaron que Rebeca Musarra fue detenida acusada de obstrucción. Posteriormente, fue ingresada en una celda de detención, pero más tarde fue puesta en libertad sin que se le imputaran cargos formales. Si crees que esto es lo máximo que puede equivocarse un policía en un encuentro con un abogado, probablemente no hayas oído hablar del caso de Nicolás, el abogado. Are you concealed weapons holder? Any weapons in the vehicle I need to be aware of? Nope, nothing illegal in the car. Yeah. All right, so after I'm done, if I ask to search the vehicle to verify what you're saying is true, you don't mind? I do mind, but only because I'm a lawyer. Este es Nicolás, un abogado en ejercicio. La noche del 6 de marzo de 2018, aproximadamente a las 21.15 horas, fue detenido por un oficial del Departamento de Policía de Orlando, junto a una gasolinera en Florida. 
El motivo inicial de la parada de tráfico fue la supuesta ilegalidad de la matrícula de Nicolás. Sin embargo, observa cómo el ayudante del sheriff intentó hacer valer su autoridad, expresando su deseo de registrar el coche de Nicolás. Hey, brother. Hi, how are you? How long ago did you get in a crash? Um, like a year. Okay. The reason I pulled you, you can't have white light emitting back. What do you mean? Your tag lights? They're supposed to illuminate your tag. Yeah. Those two white lights, all they're doing is shooting straight back. You can't have any white light limiting them back. So then that also doesn't illuminate your tag. And on top of that, you got a border around your tag that blocks the county that you live in. You can't have that on your tag. You, are you talking about the one that the car dealership puts up, the black one? That silver one that goes around your tag? Yeah, you can't have that. You got your license, brother? Of course. Vehicle registered to you? Of course. So well. And you got your registration for me? You may favor roll down that other window for me? Thank you, brother. Perfect. Where are you headed to, man? Home. Where's home? On uh, University on Pier, Pier Drive. How long you been uh, in Orlando? Huh? I work here in St. August or something. Okay, your address just still Saint, says St. Pete on your license. Yeah, I need to update it when you, I tag it in March. Okay. Are you concealed weapons holder? Any weapons in the vehicle I need to be aware of? Nope, nothing illegal in the car. Yeah. Alright, so after I'm done, if I ask to search the vehicle to verify what you're saying is true, you don't mind? I do mind, but only because I'm a lawyer. Okay. But, so you know uh, I consented, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. So you have nothing I, in the vehicle? I have absolutely nothing in the vehicle. Okay. And you don't mind confirming that by allowing us to look and make sure there's nothing in the vehicle? As you can imagine, we here know all the time as no, they have I nothing and we find that, stuff. I, I'd rather not search my car. Okay. Cool. Just hang tight, brother, okay? El oficial de policía se sorprendió al descubrir que el conductor era abogado y conocía bien sus derechos. Nicolás, plenamente consciente, se negó a consentir un registro sin orden judicial. Incapaz de hacer valer su autoridad, el policía acabó por dejarle marchar. Hola, Nicolás. So one, you gotta get that that fixed, those white lights in the back. Okay. If you keep getting pulled like that, you're gonna get tickets nonstop. I'll get it. You understand that? That border. Take that border off. Understand that? Fix that address. Right. Just give me a warning for it. El oficial se dirigió a él utilizando el término hermano en lugar del formal señor, lo que indica un intento de establecer una relación informal durante el encuentro. Si crees que este fue el único caso en el que los policías hicieron valer su autoridad, probablemente no conozcas el siguiente. Then why am I being detained? Because we're conducting an immigration inspection. Really? You have a right to ask me if I'm a U.S. citizen. I have a right to say I don't want to answer that. Este es Robert Jess Campos, un abogado defensor. En marzo de 2016, Campos viajaba de Nogales, Arizona, de regreso a Phoenix, pasando por un puesto de control permanente de la patrulla fronteriza en la I-19, justo al norte de Tubac, Arizona. So, are you, or am I being detained? Yes, you are being detained okay. for an immigration inspection. Really? I'm in 287. The Supreme Court has decided, Martinez Fuerte, really? that, uh, every, that everybody has to and stop you have, inspection. And you have probable cause to believe I'm not a U.S. No, citizen? No, I don't have to. Who are we doing today? Good. This Good. gentleman decided that he doesn't want to answer if he's a U.S. citizen or not, and that we don't have probable cause. Which one? Me? Yeah. Me? You? Yes. So you do understand the purpose of an immigration checkpoint, correct? I sure do. Okay. Well, do you have reasonable suspicion that I've committed a crime? No, I don't. But what I do have is the right to question you. According to the United States versus Martinez Fuerte, I can't keep you here until I'm satisfied that you're a United States citizen. En el caso de 1976 de Estados Unidos contra Martinez Fuerte, 
la Corte Suprema afirmó que las paradas e interrogatorios regulares de la patrulla fronteriza en los puestos de control permanentes en las carreteras principales, lejos de la frontera con México, se alinean con la Cuarta Enmienda, incluso sin sospecha específica de delito. Esta decisión permite a la patrulla fronteriza establecer puntos de control en las autopistas y realizar preguntas sobre la ciudadanía a todos los vehículos. Do you understand that? Well, no, I haven't committed any crime. You have no I probable that, cause. That, I'm not asking you if you committed a crime. I'm asking you if you're a United States citizen. I don't have to answer that. Actually, you do, sir. Really? And I can't keep you here until I'm satisfied. Really? Yes. And let me tell you this right now, okay? Since you're the driver of the vehicle, what you are doing is blocking traffic. I'll okay? do whatever you want me to do. Okay, so can you pull over there to yeah. second there for me? Yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you. Campos expresa vivamente que no es responsable de responder a ninguna de las preguntas de los policías, pero mira cómo estos policías tratan de ejercer su autoridad. Hello. Hello. Hey, I don't have to answer that question, sir. Are you a hey, yeah. And uh, how are you guys related? Yankee, I'm not going to answer your question. Do you have a probable cause that I've committed a crime and done something illegal? No, I don't. Then I should be allowed to go to on my it. way. That's not the problem. Has nothing to do with what we're well, doing. Well, do you have reasonable suspicion I've committed a crime? You don't need reasonable suspicion for immigration inspection. Do you think you, um, we have reasonable suspicion uh, that I'm not a U.S. citizen? We don't need reasonable suspicion. Okay, then why am I being detained? Because we're conducting an immigration inspection. Really? You have a right to ask me if I'm a U.S. citizen. I have a right to say I don't want to answer that. That's true. And so you have no other cause to hold me. Well, if you're, we do have other cars because if we're still, if we're still suspicious that you might be hiding the fact that you're illegal, really, you really think I'm illegal? You think I'm you have reasonable suspicion? That. I'm okay. trying to determine that. That's so why I'm gonna, asking you questions. How are you going to determine that? By asking you questions, figuring okay. out, you know, just basic information. Mm -hmm. Where were you born, sir? I'm not going to answer that. Okay, so the only thing you're doing right now is prolonging your stay here. Well, you know what? The Constitution allows me not to answer questions, That's, sir. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm not going to argue with you. That. So but, but I'd like to know what lawful authority you have to keep me here right now. I'm being detained. I'm not being allowed to go on my way. Correct. You are being detained until we determine whether we're, whether, whether we're satisfied with our immigration inspection. Okay. Right. Well, do what you need to do. I'm doing it. So I'm going to need you to step out. Am I being ordered to step out, officer? Okay, and how do I fi formally file a complaint? File a complaint about what, sir? That you refuse that you refuse to answer well, questions related to the immigration process, which this is an immigration check. I'm going to be polite, officer. Okay. I, I am just asking a simple question. To whom do I file a complaint? I can get you a complaint form that you're more than welcome to fill out and and fill in, and send in. I would like that. Okay. Thank you very much. You can go ahead and get back to your vehicle, and I'll get you. The Thank phone. you very much. Have a nice day. Hold on, they're getting me a complaint for. Yeah, he ran the uh, the plate and saw that we hadn't gone through the port of entry. That's why they're going to let us go. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. You have a good day. You too. All right. Finalmente se permitió a Robert Kyota Campos continuar hasta su casa, tras hacer valer sus derechos respetuosamente, mantener la compostura y negarse a responder a las preguntas sin objetar. A pesar de acatar las órdenes, se mantuvo firme en no permitir el registro de su persona o vehículo. Si crees que estaban deteniendo ilegalmente a Campos, entonces probablemente no has visto este próximo caso. I hear voices in my head telling me to do it. Telling you to do what? To kill people and to kill myself. Esta es Beatriz Bijou, una ex abogada diagnosticada con una condición de salud mental. El 22 de febrero de 2022, alrededor de las 12.52 pm, 
el departamento de policía de Stewart recibió una llamada al 911 de un testigo que informó haber observado un vehículo golpeando a varias personas en el estacionamiento de Fresh Market en 2300 SE Ocean BLED. A continuación, el vehículo huyó del lugar en dirección oeste por CCE Monterey, RD, Florida. Mira lo que ocurre a continuación. What was that you just said? I hear voices in my head telling me to do it. Telling you to do what? To kill people and to kill myself. You have your license with you? Yes, it's in my bag. I hit, someone, the car for me. I hit someone, someone at the fresh market. Why did you do that? Because I hear voices telling me to kill people. Are you from around here? Yes, I am. From where? From Stewart. I live right over there. In right Stewart. over where? In Stewart. Right over where? Palm Beach Road. Where's your license? Who you first? Yeah. Sir, you slow everybody else down. Do you have any personal victims or is it just property? Where? I'll go find out. Sir, six five one, my number. Bravo 220 060 90 8760. I'll go find out a first market. Beatrice, you, you don't live on Town Lakes Drive anymore? No. Where do you live now? Right there. At where? In Palm Beach Road. Palm Beach Road? Stewart, Florida 34994. John, do you hear me? Yes. I'll go check. Beatrice, why don't you come over here with me, right? Bipolar and schizophrenia. Okay, come over here. Diagnosed with it? Yeah. Do me a favor, have a seat. How you doing? I'm doing okay. What's going on? Um, I went to Fresh Market and I just ran people over because I've been hearing voices in my head telling me to kill myself and to kill people. Okay. So I did it. And what did you, what did you do at Fresh Market, you're saying? I ran people over yeah. with my car. On purpose? On purpose. Do you know how many people? I don't know how many people. What kind of people are there? Do you know how, you know how fast you were going? Um, I think maybe like 30 miles an hour. Okay. And but I accelerated so as hard as I could. Okay. And did you injure yourself at all? No. I'm not injured. Okay. But I want to go jump off the bridge. Okay. Well, you're obviously um, the police officers are going to get you the help that you need. You know, I'm just... I'm here from the fire department just to see if you have any injuries. I don't have any injuries. Do you take any medication for anything? Yes, I take um, Trileptol for bipolar and Ziprasidone, Geodon for schizophrenia. So those are two things that you've been diagnosed with? Mm -hmm. Do you have any other medical problems? I'm anemic. Do you take anything for that? I just the pills? Just iron pills. Like, yeah. Iron okay. Alright. And how, how often do you take your medication? Um, I've been taking it, but I've been stopping taking it. Like, you're not taking it like you're supposed to? Yeah. I took my medication, but I stopped taking it on the weekends. For, for what reason? Because I would go to see my boyfriend on the weekends and I didn't want him to know I had the condition. 
medication. Okay. Can you advise on any airway? So when was the last time you took your medicine? No way. Um, this morning. But then, you, so you take it during the week, but you skip on the weekend? Okay. But you took it this morning. Sometimes I, I skip it. How often do you see your, your, your doctor? I have a psychiatry appointment tomorrow. When was the last time you saw Was everything good then? Um, I didn't tell him a lot that I've been going through what I've been going through. Okay. Bijou contó su prescripción de medicamentos para el trastorno bipolar y la esquizofrenia, mencionando estar bajo el cuidado de un médico, pero sin haberse comunicado con él desde diciembre de 2021. A pesar de haber sido diagnosticada de trastornos mentales en 2019, Bijou insistió en ser acusada de intento de asesinato, afirmando que sus actos fueron intencionados. Atropelló a cuatro víctimas con su vehículo causando heridas graves a una mujer de 69 años que fue trasladada en helicóptero al Centro de Traumatología de Longwood. Dos se negaron a recibir tratamiento adicional, mientras que otra con una posible lesión en la pierna fue trasladada a la Cleveland Clinic North por su familia. Es extraño ver a oficiales de policía intentando imponer su autoridad y cometiendo errores. Si te ha gustado este video, dale al botón de Me Gusta y asegúrate de suscribirte. Hasta luego.